Hey there, welcome to the 2023 advent of code. So today was pretty interesting, actually. If we look at the leaderboard, uh, I did horribly today, unfortunately, because it took me forever to figure out my problem with part two. But seven minutes for the part two leaderboard to fill up is actually insanely long for day one. So hopefully that doesn't mean much for the rest of the problems this year. Anyway, let's take a look. So skipping through all of the flavor text, we see that our puzzle input consists of a bunch of lines of text. Each line originally had a calibration value that now needs to be recovered. And on each line, the calibration value is found by combining the first digit and the last digit to form a single two digit number. So looking at this example, we have 12 here, 38, 15. And notice here that although there's only one digit, it counts as both the first and the last. So we have 77. Okay, so let's move this into our test file. Um, this load function for some reason doesn't seem to work. So I'll fix that later, but for now we can just copy paste. And now let's get straight to writing the code. So we need to keep a total sum because we're trying to get the sum of the calibration values. And then for each line, we can find the first and last digit by doing digits equals uh, character for character in X if character is digit. So that's the simplest way of getting the list of all digits. And then we just need to take the first digit and the last digit, add them together, convert it to an int, and add that into our total. And that gives us our part one answer. Now, part two is actually a pretty significant difficulty jump. I'm kind of surprised for day one, but it looks like some of the digits are spelled out with numbers, one through nine. Uh, note that zero isn't included here. It actually won't make a difference, I believe, because I don't think the test data contains zero. So here's the part that tripped me up and why I think it took so long for people to solve this problem. Note here that some of these digits overlap. Now, because we're looking for the first digit on this side, that doesn't matter, but we're also looking for the last digit on this side. And so if your output, for example, ends with, uh, let's say, what's a good example here? Eight, let's just go with eight, two. If you do this naively and just use a regular expression to find all matches, it will say that the last digit is eight, but the last digit is actually two, which is actually not exceedingly difficult to work around, but still pretty annoying and why I believe probably most people took so long. So let's modify this. To get the digits, we'll just use regular expressions. We'll have a list of all of the digits. We'll do zero, sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And we'll just do that to get a list. It's faster than typing out the list yourself. And then we want a regular expression pattern. So for this pattern, we'll first join all of our uh, word version digits via pipes. And then we'll also add just a digit character itself because we still need to match those. Now, if we just did digits equals uh, regex.find all with our pattern on X, this wouldn't quite work. So let's just try this out on the test code. As we see, um, sorry, I need to replace the test data. As we see, we're only getting eight and three for our second line, even though we should have eight, two, and three. And it's really annoying, in my opinion, that this test data actually doesn't break solutions that aren't valid. So you only figure it out on your main input and you cannot debug it using the test data. I don't really know why they chose to do this. And so what we instead do is we employ a regex uh, non-caption group. What this does is the outer uh, brackets form a uh, cap, uh, group, and this is basically a regex extension. And so what this means is it matches the text, but it doesn't consume it. And this is important here because it means that, for example, on this line, after matching eight, it will return that value, but then it won't consume it. And so when it starts searching again, it'll start from the next character instead of jumping past the eight, which is the default behavior. And so we just need to wrap this entire thing in a group like so. 
And the inner uh, round brackets are important because it makes it actually return the value. If you don't include these, the match will succeed, but it'll give you an empty string. And so now we get all of the digits we need. And now we can just do, let's define a function that maps a string to its numerical form. So if x is in n, then we return the index plus one. So that converts our word form digits into numbers. And otherwise, if it's a literal digit, we just return int x. And so now we can do um, list of map f over our find call. And so now we have a list of numbers. And then we can just do, actually, we can do this a bit simpler. Uh, we can make f return strings instead, because we need to join them. And now we just do digits zero plus digits negative one again. And finally, we turn that into an integer and add it to t. And that gives us our final answer. So takeaways from this problem, um, don't, ex don't always rely on the test data to validate your solutions. Sometimes you just need to inspect it a bit more thoroughly. In this case, it took me quite a bit of time to figure out what exactly the issue was. I probably could have gotten onto the leaderboard if I just realized that the issue was the overlap thing. Um, but unfortunately I didn't. So lesson learned for me as well. In any case, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed.